You're a packed house, mate. That's good. You're in the right place. You're going to do an amazing speech right now. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> I just know because I know her. She's an amazing person, so I'm assuming that the speech is going to be good too. All right, all right. It is a workshop. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, who will be delivering? Okay, so Lee Chantel is going to be delivering the next workshop around indoor entertainment for the rest of the afternoon. For those of you who don't know Lee Chantel, she's a published author, international speaker, and consultant who lives mostly in Brizzy. She gives lectures, workshops, consultations, and coaching in online marketing, communication, and vegan health and fitness. Shh. Vegan health and lifestyle, I'm sorry. Lee Chantel has been vegan for almost 20 years, a pioneer vegan over here. Led the way for all of us to follow. Thanks, Lee Chantel and has run the online vegan community Viva La Vegan since 2005, bringing positive education, information, and vegan outreach to a worldwide audience. Her most recent book is a collection of interviews with over 100 vegan athletes from all over the world. She previously founded and ran the not-for-profit environmental awareness Green Earth Group from 2009 to 2013, which hosted two successful all-vegan Enviro festivals in Brisbane. Today, Lee Chantel will be talking to you for the next 30 minutes about marketing yourself online. Something that a lot of people don't know how to do. I've seen how people act online and it ain't good. So Lee Chantel, listen to her if you're one of those people. It's going to be really good. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you for coming. Can everyone see and hear me? Sorry, can't hear. We need a bit of interaction while I'm talking, Lee. So today we're talking about marketing yourself and on online, and that's marketing yourself and veganism online. And I'll just go through a bit of my background first, and I'll tell you why I give these sort of talks. So I started in marketing and promotion. Oh, sorry, the um, it's thrown out some of my text here, but I've been involved in marketing and promotion for quite a few years. Um, quite, um, years ago I was going to be a rock star, so um, I've started, I've done a lot with music promotion for my CDs and my music, and I run events and festivals since 2009, and that was Brisbane's first vegan festival that we had here. And um, my background now, what I focus on is content creation. I used to do a lot of content creation, I used to do a lot of social media marketing for businesses and brands. And now I focus more on appraisals, consulting, training and coaching to these small businesses and to corporate clients. And um, just at the bottom you can see the things that I give le lectures and workshops on there. So one of them includes vegan health and lifestyle and um, volume. Can everyone hear that button? And um, so, and I also talk about marketing and social media. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I've run my website, vivalavegan.net, since 2005. And I hope a lot of you know that. And um, if you aren't aware of the website, then you need to have a look at it right now. And that started in 2005. Here's a screenshot of the website now. It was just relaunched at the beginning of the year for the 10th anniversary. And so if you have a look on there, there's 10 years worth of all these things here. So blogs, articles, interviews, podcasts, things like that. So, um, and I've also released some books. So my fourth book is one on vegan athletes. So if you'd have, like to have a look, it's just here at the front. And the Vegan Vegetarian Society of Queensland also have that at their store if you'd like to have a flip through. So, um, can everyone see the text okay? Yeah, that's okay. And feel free to take photos of the slides if you like, if that's something that you find informative and you like to remember it. And yeah, tag me, take photos of me, that's fine, and tag me online. And um, I just want to go over the fact that there's so many tools that we can use online nowadays. There's so many ways that we can promote what we need to promote to people, and that includes veganism. So, um, it's, everything is more prevalent, there's so many more people that are getting involved in these spaces and it's much easier for people to do. And um, I'd just like to point out that I'm speaking about online stuff today, and online marketing and activism, but um, I want to make sure that people are aware that you need to do some offline activities as well. 
and it's just utilizing your skills and experiences in the best way. So I'm, I know that a lot of people aren't that great with one-on-one -on -one communication. If you're only able to do online stuff, that's great, no judgment. But for everyone else who can, you need to be upping the ante a bit. It's really easy to get your message across on Facebook and on social media. And I really hope to inspire everyone to find out what your skills, what your passions and your expertise are and to use those to the best of your abilities to be promoting veganism. There's a hell of a lot of social media sites around. So um, most people have an average of five social media sites that they're actually a member of. And um, before, people just targeted things to us. So if you have a look at the differences here, it's showing that before someone used to send up a press release, you'd write a press release, you'd send it to the media, they would write an article and then it would go to the consumers. But it's pretty much flipped around now. So over here, um, there's social media that links individuals and it links people much easier and you can select what you want and who you trust and then people consume. I hope you like all my little um, additions to the slides. It's pretty cool, eh? um, And so social media focuses on the process and not the outcome. So this is a really good tip. I don't know if a lot of you know of the Cruelty Free Shop. It's just opened in Brisbane. Jess is a great friend of mine. And I'd like to give her examples of using social media. So um, she's just been opening a store. We've been setting up the store. She's been taking photos of the before before the store's been set up, before the store's been open, so just got the floors down, we've just painted the walls and we're stocking the shelves. Things like that are really important because you're showing your fans and you're showing people who may want to know that sort of information. And that means they get on board and they feel they're part of that journey of what you're doing as well. So it's more, it's less formal, it's more engaging. Anyone can post stuff online and um, it's mostly cost saving. So I say that because we need to do a bit of advertising nowadays that you didn't have to say 10 years ago. And um, it's a great way to build your online community. And um, with all the things that we have, most people have a camera and a phone in their pocket at the moment. So that's so easy for people to be able to create things and to upload them online. And social media is the influence for a lot of people. People don't really follow governments, teachers, churches, schools, um, things like that anymore. Um, most people, whether we like it or not, turn to celebrities and people that are seen as um, someone who knows what they're talking about in the area. So, and I'd like to also point out the most vocal people online, whether they know what they're talking about or not, that's who people listen to. A lot of people always ask, what channel should I use? There's so many channels, like I said, there's hundreds. So here's a good um, way to start, so to think about it. So Facebook's 1.71 billion users, and the next closest is YouTube at just over 1 billion. So that would be where I would focus, and that's where I would start. As much as you know, Facebook is really bad for security, and you know, I personally can't stand Facebook, but it's where you need to be because your followers and the people you need to be interacting with, that's where they're going to be. And this is just a graph of the top social platforms in Australia. So this, those um, stats before were overall, and this is specific to Australia. So if you have a look, Facebook's still the top one with 41%, and then it goes down to Tumblr. Now, um, the top three things that I say to people when you're trying to create um, buzz online, or you're trying to promote and market yourself or your brand or veganism or whatever online, is you need to focus on three different things. One of them is to create content. Um, the next one is to schedule them or post them. And the next one is to interact with them. So if you think about those three tips, and that's all you go away with today, then I've done my job somewhat. So um, you want to be creating and sharing high quality information, high quality images, and um, something that's relevant and shareable. You don't want to just be sharing stuff that you think is funny or that's really cute or whatever. Are people actually going to appreciate that? Are people going to share that from you? 
And do you want to focus on relevant, up-to-date information that relates to your industry or what you're trying to promote? And try and focus on something outside the square. I'm really into um, calligraphy and my lettering at the moment, so I've scattered a few things like that throughout this. And I'd like you to focus more on visuals. Most people learn better from visuals, and um, visual content is more likely to get shared. So when I say visual, I mean photographs, I mean um, videos. And I want you to focus on creating your own original and branded visual content. So not just sharing memes that every single other person on Facebook shares, or not just sharing stuff that anyone can just get online if they Google a particular thing. I want you to focus on creating your own stuff that people have to come to you to see that. And it's great if you can brand it too. If you know what a watermark is, and that's like your branding or your logo on those images you create. There's a website called Peak Monkey that's pretty good to use. And I'd suggest that if you don't have any sort of skills with graphic design like me. Um, and Instagram and Pinterest are really important for those sort of visuals. They're good for basic platforms. But don't forget all the other social media channels as well. And like I said, own content, very important. And that, this is where people come to you because they want that information that makes you seen as an expert in your area. And focus on building your own digital assets. Now, I'd just like to point out to everyone, whatever you're creating for Facebook, if you're just doing a post on Facebook, if you're just doing something on Instagram, they own those. That's part of their thing. It has nothing to do with you. But if you're creating your own digital assets, say, come from your website or your blog, that's your own stuff that you own, that you're sharing on these platforms. So, um, and then from the website and blog, you've got all these other things that you can do. So like articles, e-books, um, presentations, and then social media networks are encompassed in those assets also. Now, one of the things that people seem to forget is social media marketing. There's a very important word in there. What does everyone think it is? Social. And that means that we're meant to be social. We're meant to be interacting with people. If someone asks us a question, we respond to them. And we want to respond to them quite promptly. We don't want to get into debates or arguments with us online. You just want to take their feedback, thank you for the feedback, we'll follow it up. And um, we need to be asking more questions, responding, or join communities and groups. If you're sharing things, use the plus symbol, which is for Google Plus, or the at for most of the other channels. And important thing is to collect email addresses. And a friend of mine just reminded me of a talk I gave in um, Washington quite a few years ago about how long things last online. So um, it was, say, 15 minutes for a post you put on Twitter, two hours for something on Facebook, and email lasts for as long as someone has it until you delete it. So please keep these sort of things in mind. Um, like I was saying before, we want to interact with people. We want, also want to give people value. What are they getting from you? Are you actually giving them some sort of value? And before you post, make sure you ask yourself these sort of questions. And will it be shareable? Um, I don't know if people here, anyone in bands here, or have their own business, or people that um, work with other people, they're not the only person sharing things online. I would suggest that you take turns. So Monday's Dave's turn, Tuesday Bob's turn, and you share different things or you're in charge of different social media channels. Um, I use a schedule um, company called Hootsuite to schedule updates. And I would suggest people do that for the majority of their posts as well. And um, it just gives you more time and you know you need to be thinking about time and energy management with this stuff because it can be really overwhelming with the amount of content sometimes. And it's also important to know that what you're doing works. So am I getting shares? Am I getting likes? Am I getting comments? Why am I not getting those things? If 
Facebook's a bit of a hard one. I don't have time to really go into all the Facebook issues. But um, just keep those things in mind. You want to be getting something from all the effort you're putting into things. And um, let people know that you actually have these social media channels. So if you're on Twitter and you want people to join you on Facebook, say, oh, here's my, here's my Facebook link. And please put your social media channels on your website or your blog. No one's going to know that you have them that to do. And so these are some things I want you to think about as well. Different tools that you can use. So this is your owned, owned media, which is what you own, that is your own stuff. So your website content and digital goods, for example, ebooks, videos, things like that. Your earned media is what you get from all that information that you've put online. And um, that includes things like organic reach, SEO, social media, and your mailing list. And paid media is advertising. So here's some ideas for some shareable content. And I'm sorry that not everyone can read that. But um, I'll pro actually, I'll probably put this on the slides there next week. So have a look out for that. Um, we want, there's just some examples of what we're doing and what we're trying to get from people. So say if you want to create conversation, educate or inform someone. If you want to share visuals, link to your website, gauge opinions, entertain or be inspirational. So there's just examples for each of that and what you can share. So keep all these things in mind and we want to be sharing different things and something different each day. So if you break it down and work on some sort of schedule of what you're going to create, you're going to share it, that really helps, I think. So you can do like an article on Monday and Thursday, things like that. And remember to share all these across every social media, social media channel you have. Here's some other ideas that you can do as well to get um, your name out there or to promote things. And guest blogging is a really good one, a cross promotion, guest writing, um, getting um, reviews, doing some videos, joining some forums. Now we'll add like Facebook groups to that. And um, mentoring is also really important. In particular, if you, I love being a mentor to people. I think it's you both get something from that. And um, podcasts, audio, and books also are important. Um, one of the talks I gave recently um, was about commitment and consistency in business and beyond. And they're very important words, I think, just in general with relationships and people. We need to be consistent. You need to keep at it. You need to commit to what you're doing. And um, a lot of people don't like those words, or a lot of people are quite lazy, so it's not going to work for you with that. You need to be updating regularly, you need to be sharing information with people, you need to be interacting with people. And you need to have good time management skills and I add energy management skills into that. And keep some sort of expectation. You need to work out what you can do. I encourage everyone to release something at least once a week. So a blog a week or a video a week or an article a week. That's quite achievable. You don't have to do it every week. You can write 12 in, in one day or one weekend or something and you have them over time. And it's much better if you're giving regular information or sharing regular information to people rather than going, I'm going to sit down and write 20 articles I'm going to post them all this week and then I don't see anything from you for six months. So you need to have clear goals, you need to work out what you want to achieve. Do you want more people to come to your website? Do you want more likes? Do you want people to buy your new e -book? Um, I don't have time to go through specific things with the best times to post on social media channels, but you can have a look at those things online. And that's really important to know the best times to post and when your audience is actually going to be there. So for example, um, uh, a client that has a store open in the day is going to be different from someone who has an adult store and most of the people come out at night. And um, people used to say it took six months to develop an online um, position and some sort of authority, but I would say it takes more like eight years to two years nowadays. So that's sort of, if you relate that to a new business, that helps.
me to create your tribe. I love talking about creating tribes because I think it's really important. We all need to help each other. We all need to build a community and we all need to be giving back to people. Um, build your digital assets, which we went over before, and we need to be creating multimedia content. And I'd just like to give an example of what I'm talking about at the bottom. If you create one sort of content, so I have a, a vegan question and answer series on um, vegalavegan.net YouTube channel. Now from those videos that I created, I have the video which is on YouTube and you can also upload to Facebook. From that I detached audio so I could create podcasts. From those podcasts I got people to transcribe those and from those transcriptions that can become a blog and an ebook. So think about those things that you create and how you can create even more things from you. And be careful of what you're sharing online. People don't seem to realise that once you put something online, it stays there. And um, this can be good and it can be bad. So um, you have to think about people that are posting on behalf of your company. Is everyone aware of what sort of language you're going to use? How often they need to interact? Are they aware not to use slang or terms that not everyone may understand? Always use correct grammar, punctuation and spelling, please. Um, and you like that? <laughs> We're grammar Nazis. And, um, but should be, you know? Um, and uh, one thing I really like to point out, if you want to say to someone's face, if I want to stand here and say something to Adele now, or if I would write something on a postcard and send it around the world where every single person can read that, whoever touches that postcard, please don't put it online. It's not appropriate. I love talking about online etiquette. It's one of my favorite subjects. And people just are not nice. And all the little um, areas that I'm involved with, whether it's um, feminism or veganism, um, environmental stuff, so many people are very judgmental and so many people like to think they're always right. And of course we're always right, but sometimes we have to just imagine that other people could also be right. And, um, you know, online behaviour, it's not an afterthought. It really isn't, especially if this is attached to a na your name or your brand. And I, I love words. I love English language and other languages. And they're so powerful, they're so important. They have the power to motivate you and they also have the power to really hurt and harm people. So please remember that. Here's my top 10 tips for online etiquette. And um, the first one, the most important thing is act, don't react. So if you're very passionate about something, instead of going responding to someone, if there's something you need to say, write it down. The next day, if that's still important to you, then you can post it. But just chill out a bit, you know? Let's be nice. If you have a problem with someone, let's just talk to them personally about it. I know not everyone's good with communicating and is it as direct as me, for example, but we need to create private, we need to keep private things private. Yeah, and like I said before about spelling, graph, and punctuation, and be mindful and be aware, be conscious of what you're saying, who's going to read your post and what's going to happen from that. And just, you know, overall, just be kind, be nice. That's what we all need to be. As vegans, we're always saying that we love animals and that we're looking after these animals. You know, we're animals too. Let's be nice to each other, for one. Um, keep your passwords safe. It's pretty simple. Don't put all your information online either. If someone's being mean to someone, if someone's bullying someone online, make sure you say something about it. Call out people and their behaviour in a nice way. Credit people if you use something they created. Let's repeat that. If I create something, I want you to credit me. I put time and energy into creating that. You may not be a photographer, you may not be a graphic artist, so you should be crediting these people when they've done something you can't do yourself. 
and take responsibility for everything you do online. If you post all the time mean stuff when you're drunk, you probably should think about drinking it. So remember, once something's out and about online, you have no control over it. So that's the only thing that you have control over is what you're sharing online. So be aware of that. And the internet can be a marketing tool for you, your business, and what you're trying to promote. And people that are actually putting in the effort to cultivate relationships that are working well on those things, they're the people who do well online. And I really want everyone to be involved in the vegan community in particular. This is great to see so many people here today. Have you gone to all the different schools outside? Have you found what people are doing in the area? I really encourage you to do that. Um, you need to support other groups and events. Just because you may not agree with what the group stands for or the person involved or a topic doesn't mean you can't learn something from them. And the more open you are to learning about these things, the more that you're going to learn. And um, it's sort of talking about like creating your vegan tribe, but I remember um, when I first was conscious of trying to surround myself with vegan people, I didn't really care what else they were into or whatever, as long as they were vegan. So I just had all these vegan people I hung out with all the time. And um, over a few years I worked out, well, they're maybe not that nice a person, or I disagree with some of the other things they do, like say they're breakfast, for example. So then you can be a bit more selective. And um, you know, the people that are in my life now, I've chosen for them to be there because they bring something to my life. And um, I also want to really bring home, you need to take some time out for yourself sometimes. If you're always involved in activism, it's very overwhelming. There's a lot of negative, neg negativity around, and you need to take your time, some time out, just to do something completely removed. For me, I love AFL, so that's my thing. We try to watch a lot of AFL games, don't start on the Brisbane Lions this year. And um, here's some things with what I'd like you to focus on today. Some things that you can do quite easily. If you've got a phone, let's use it for some good. Let's do some good things right now. You can change your email signature to include a fact or a quote. You can join or follow some new pages or people that you agree with or you'd like to see more information from them. Retweet, share something that you love, your favourite link. Comment on a new blog, articles, news list in a nice way. Share related videos from YouTube or from Vimeo. Um, sign up to receive emails from your favourite websites or blogs. And honestly, if you, if you have a platform where people are listening to you and respecting you and looking up to you, please use this for good. Please, let's get rid of egos and stuff like that. We want to be doing good stuff. And here's just a couple of other tips. Remember to be genuine and honest in everything you do. I think people can see through if you're not. Lead by example to help build our vegan community. Um, keep your mind on your goals and stay focused. And like, we really need to believe we're all part of the change that we need and that you, you yourself have the power to change things and to really enact um, some change in people. We need to inspire others in our actions and lead by example. And I really want everyone to show how easy it is to be vegan. Because it is. I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm still alive. You can do it. Um, here's um, where you can connect with me. So um, here's my Vigor the Vegan um, places. Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, and now on Instagram. And then my Lee Chantel. Also, Facebook, Google+, Plus, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. So, <laughs> um, I'd like to thank everyone for listening today, and I hope you've learned something today. And um, if you have learned something, please tell someone what you've learned. And I'd like everyone to educate everyone in something you don't know about. And um, I'd like to thank you for being here today, and enjoy the rest of your day.